You see this green line that I've drawn? So over the years, it continues to go higher and higher. What we see here back in uh, 2020 was when the illness started, you got a big jump up in silver relative to other commodities. And why? It's, it's really the money of last resort. Not too many people believe that unless they study the silver market from both a industrial and monetary perspective. But these charts don't lie. That's what it said. And then it dropped way, way off after, uh, you could say, political pressure. Things, good times are here again. There's no need to have any, you know, <clears throat> hedge position or monetary metal in your portfolio or whatever. So anyway, it crashed down. Now it's starting up again. And again, we're seeing higher lows. And this trend, I think, will get, will take this high out at some point. And you see silver and gold relative to a basket of commodities kind of be at the king position, the, the utmost highs. Today, we're diving into an insightful analysis from David Morgan, a renowned expert in the precious metals market. We'll explore the trends in silver prices, industrial demand, and the broader economic implications. So grab your notepads and settle in for an in-depth look at silver's past performance, current status, and future prospects. Let's start by examining the long-term weekly chart of silver prices dating back to 2005. The chart reveals significant price movements, beginning with a rise from around $1.05, peaking near $1.50, and experiencing notable fluctuations during the financial crisis. Silver's journey saw it dip to about $1.09s, only to climb back to around $1.50. One key period highlighted is from January 2011 to late 2013, where silver traded above $1.30 for nearly two years, Despite some dips, this period indicates robust industrial demand for silver, with industries readily purchasing at these elevated prices. This demand demonstrates the price inelasticity of silver in industrial applications. For example, the cost of silver in a high-priced item like a refrigerator is minimal, making price fluctuations relatively insignificant for manufacturers. The solar industry, in particular, has seen a substantial uptick in demand for silver, a trend expected to continue. This surge in demand is evident in the formation of a large cup and handle pattern on the chart, a bullish technical indicator suggesting potential for significant upward movement once silver consistently breaches the $1.30 resistance level. Next, we look at silver's performance relative to a basket of commodities, as represented by the Commodity Research Bureau CRB index. Historically, silver was undervalued compared to other commodities before 2005. Since then, its value has trended upward, underscoring silver's resilience and its role as a money of last resort during economic uncertainties. Before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more expert insights and analysis. This is a weekly chart going back to like 2005. You can see the big move from about the $5 level all the way up to here. And then of course, we had the big sell-off during the financial crisis that got down to about nine. And then from there, it went all the way up to about 50. But I want to point out is that we were above 30 from approximately January 2011 to about the end of 2013 for almost two years. Yes, there's this dip here that might be six months. And this dip here might have been a month. So you can factor that into your thinking. But this red line is at the $30 level. So you can see that for, we'll say a year and a half, silver traded above 30. So during 2011 to 2012, 2012 to 2013, industry was buying silver as required at that level. And, you know, they had no qualms about doing it. I mean, the, the price of silver really is inelastic on the demand side for most of industry because the end product is so small uh, in price for silver versus the total product. A refrigerator that costs a few thousand and there's 20 bucks in silver, uh, and there's not even that much, maybe two bucks. So if it goes up tenfold, it's 20 bucks. I mean, and that's the case in many, many cases <clears throat> of how silver is used. And of course, as many have pointed out, the, uh, the solar industry is really gone bonkers the last few years and it's projected to do so uh, over the coming years. So we have this massive cup 
and this handle coming pretty much down to the right, which is what you want. The breakout point of the cup, of course, is up here, which we're just doing now. So once we use get to 30 and stay there and it becomes support rather than resistance, then the upside, of course, is rather significant. It can move quite quickly. And I want to point out a couple things <clears throat> going forward. First of all, this bottom chart is useful if you know what you're looking at. And this is silver versus the CRB, the Commodity Research Bureau. So it's looking at silver in terms of all commodities or a basket of commodities. And this is how uh, Professor Jastrom looked at gold in the golden constant, also looked at it in silver, the restless metal. So he didn't compare gold and silver in fiat terms. He looked at it as a basket of commodities. So you can see back before 2005 that <clears throat> silver was really undervalued compared to a basket of commodities. And the trend is up. You see this green line that I've drawn. So over the years, it continues to go higher and higher. What we see here back in uh, 2020 was when the illness started, you got a big jump up in silver relative to other commodities. And why? It's, it's really the money of last resort. Not too many people believe that unless they study the silver market from both a industrial and monetary perspective. But these charts don't lie. That's what it said. And then it dropped way, way off after... Uh, you could say political pressure, things, good times are here again. There's no need to have any, you know, <clears throat> hedge position or monetary metal in your portfolio or whatever. So anyway, it crashed down. Now it's starting up again. And again, we're seeing higher lows. And this trend, I think, will get, will take this high out at some point. And you see silver and gold relative to a basket of commodities kind of be at the king position, the, the utmost highs. During the COVID-19 pandemic in 2020, silver saw a significant spike relative to other commodities, reinforcing its status as a safe haven asset. This was followed by a sharp decline as economic optimism returned, but the trend of higher lows suggests a long-term upward trajectory. Morgan predicts that silver and gold will eventually reclaim their positions as top commodities in terms of value. Analyzing the purchasing power of silver relative to commodities rather than fiat currency offers a clearer picture of its true value. For instance, during the pandemic, silver's purchasing power peaked, indicating it was more valuable in terms of real goods despite lower fiat prices compared to its peak in 2011. Switching focus to recent developments, Morgan highlights some alarming news from Cuba where the banking system has collapsed, leaving citizens without access to their bank accounts or cash. Such situations underscore the importance of holding physical assets like silver and gold as a hedge against financial system failures. And just uh, one or two more comments on this chart. And that is <clears throat> looking at the recent uh, 20 years and you get to this high near 50 back at the end of April, early May of 2011. You see that price, but you also see based on a basket of commodities, we were here back in the illness situation we were here. So this is really the best way to measure the purchasing power, the value of silver. It's not in fiat terms, which of course 50 is much higher than the near 30 level here, but how much does it buy you? And you can see from the chart, the lower chart here, that on a value basis of buying real things, not putting it in a bank account, <clears throat> it actually was superior back in the, uh, from the March time frame on up to where it peaked and then started falling off. And this is really the best way to get a handle on when, you know, silver is overvalued. Is it overvalued in terms of paper? Well, that's hard to say. Is it overvalued in terms of uh, commodities? Uh, well, again, you can take a look and have a pretty good idea. And now I'd like to just continue with our Twitter account, which is at SilverGuru22. Uh, these are some posts from yesterday, but if you aren't aware of this, you should be. And that is the entire banking system in Cuba collapses, citizens left penniless and desperate. And this is from Citizens Watch Report. Another report here from uh, Phoenix Reloaded, which is on Twitter, retweeted by me. The financial banking system in Cuba has completely collapsed. Cubans woke to learn their bank accounts have been emptied. 
There is no cash at ATMs. A uh, last one here, bank collapse, <clears throat> and then comes what? Universal basic income. Long lines form and frustration grows as Cubans run short of cash. In the global market, there's notable activity in China, where the Shanghai Gold Exchange and the Futures Exchange have seen new highs in silver prices and new lows in vault stockpiles since 2020. This indicates strong demand and potentially constrained supply, a bullish sign for silver prices. Morgan also references renowned investor Michael Burry, known for his role in The Big Short, who is heavily investing in physical gold. This move highlights a broader trend among savvy investors seeking to protect their wealth amidst economic uncertainties. The industrial demand for silver remains robust, particularly from the solar industry. For example, India is developing a solar farm five times the size of Paris, which will significantly boost silver demand. Despite retail investors being relatively inactive, large-scale industrial demand continues to drive silver prices upward. Uh, Michael Berry, Berry from the Big Short, of course, is piling into physical gold. And I jokingly said, um, He's not going to get a Cuba pulled on him. Uh, a lot of these posts are from today. Uh, looking at um, the Oriental Ghost and Thank You Bay, the uh, posts are most useful to all of us. And he's reporting here that the Shanghai Gold Exchange <clears throat> and the Futures Exchange has uh, new highs in, in silver uh, since the opening in 2012 and new lows in the vaults at the SFE, lowest since 2020, I should say. So it's reacting to supply and demand. I put a hmm, because it doesn't always do that. <clears throat> and then a few more posts on, uh, on the silver market. And I uh, put one in here from Tavi. I don't know if we've got it here again about a triple top. Pause here for a minute. Um, you know, something that I coined years ago with uh, Financial Sense News Hour, Jim Paplava, silver will wear you out or scare you out. A lot of uh, silver investors over the last few years and years past as well that bought in probably at these levels. Retail is actually not buying right now. And um, there's a lot of sellback, actually. The, where the uh, wholesale market is pretty um, <clears throat> loaded with silver, but yet... We continue to see the price go up. And of course, that's due to the big buyers, which is basically industrial supply, industrial need, uh, India, which as we put in the Morgan report <clears throat> month ago about um, the solar farm going in India, that's going to be five times the size of Paris. Think about that. That's pretty significant. 